traumatism spine implies that injury has occurred to any uh, any and uh, or all of the following anatomical structures like bony elements soft tissue and neurological structures and the spinal cord injury is the more dreadful injury one can get among this hippocrates opened long back probably third or fourth uh, 100 BC, no treatment options existed. His spine fracture was coupled with the paralysis, and these unfortunate individuals were destined to die. Even after years of centuries, uh, we are not uh, far away from that uh, that statement. There is still there is no definite treatment available for spinal cord injury, and the surgeons or phys treating physicians' role is to uh, restore the mechanical stability of the spine and try to prevent in further neurologic injury, progressive deformity, or prolonged or incapacitating pain. There was a tragic incident in 1995. Uh, Christopher, Reeve, you are, all of you know that he is the Superman. He played Superman in the many movies. And uh, he had a tragic incident that, that paralyzed him. And after that, there was a resurgence in the interest of uh, spinal uh, cord injury research. And even the Christopher uh, Reeve Foundation, uh, how many path-breaking discoveries and uh, treatment modalities. But still, it is in experimental stage. At present, uh, there is no clinically proven treatment for uh, spinal cord injury. Uh, etiology, you can see that with vehicle accidents contribute the most of the uh, most of the cases, followed by the violence, falls, sports, and others. And uh, there, uh, every year, 10,000 new cases are added to that pool. So, what is the cause of the injury? The stability of the spinal column may be compromised when there is an injury to the bony elements and disruption of the ligaments, resulting in spinal instability. So, there are a variety of causes uh, there. And this disruption, this loss of stability result in traumatic injury to the neural tissues like a, a result in concussion, contusion, laceration, transaction, hemorrhage, and diameter vessels supplying in the spinal cord and resulting in spinal cord deformity, uh, deficits. So the most common locations, uh, locations are cervical spine 1 to 2, cervical uh, in subaxial spine, it is four to, between C4 and C7, and uh, in uh, those uh, thoracolumbar junction, that is 12th thoracic vertebrae to 2nd uh, lumbar vertebrae, these are the most common locations where the spinal cord injury has occurred. This location reflects the most mobile portions of the vertebral column and the locations where the spinal cord occupy most of the vertebral canal. So the chance of injury to spinal cord at this area are very high. Then uh, part of the evaluation, we are all, all of you know that we have to take uh, X-rays, the plain X-ray, the standard AP lateral and odontoid uh, in cervical spine, open mouth V is, is, is the standard recommendation. And uh, in cervical spine, especially, you can see that in this case, uh, the this is doing no injury. And but uh, if uh, the if the arms are pulled and a proper X-ray is taken, uh, showing a subluxation at uh, C. Uh, the lower down C6, 7. So the cervical spine, uh, uh, the image uh, should include C6, uh, C7, D1 junction. Uh, then only it will consider adequate. If you are not getting it, you have to uh, uh, you have to go for either CT scan. When a plane radiograph is inadequate or fa uh, fail to visualize, you have to go for the CT scan. Another indication for the CT scan is convergence, uh, convenience, and speed. If the CT head is needed, you can always ask for a uh, CT of the cervical spine uh, along with that. Now the spiral CTs are very fast, they can take it, uh, the cervical spine, uh, even the whole board, body uh, CT, all the vertebral column can be uh, taken in few minutes time. And in some cases to, uh, to give you a further evaluation uh, of the uh, suspicious or intermediate abnormality seen in the x-ray and the last is uh, fract uh, to see the displacement better and the MRI is the uh, investigation of choice if uh, to evaluate non osseous lesions like a ligamentous injury, extradural, spinal hematoma, disrupture and spinal cord hemorrhage condition and edema. Uh, this is a perfect example of the CT scan. You can see that this is almost normal there, uh, the cervical spine, except the patient was got a uh, severe 
tenderness on moving but a ct scan was ordered because of that see that there is a this is called a burst fracture or jefferson fracture this is a potentially uh, unstable situation patient can go for a neurologic deficit if it is not detected and properly immobilized so coming to pathophysiology of the spinal cord injury the uh, you can uh, divide into primary injury and a secondary or ongoing injury primary injury is the immediate disruption uh, of axons and res uh, resulting laceration stretch tear or uh, tear uh, but uh, once this uh, this uh, uh, happen then the secondary or, or ongoing injury uh, uh, will start this is because of the normal blow, uh, blood flow is disrupted spinal cord depleted of oxygen ischemia cell death uh, that will ha uh, happen within 4 hours this result in release of free radicals and free radic this will act as a, a vicious cycle will uh, uh, will uh, increase the edema, compression, again, hem uh, uh, again uh, spinal cord ischemia and cell death. So the longer this process, the more, per uh, more the permanent damage because CNS does not regenerate and spinal cord comes in the CNS so it, it will not regenerate as a uh, peripheral nerve. As I said earlier, there is no proper treatment available for spinal cord injury. So rehabilitation, the, we cannot, we cannot treat this patient. So we have, we have to say that we are doing a rehabilitation right from the beginning. So we are, rehabilitation begins at the time of stabilization itself. So it is not a, uh, it is, uh, it is not after a few months or a uh, few years. So we have to start the rehabilitation immediately. That. We are not treating the patient, probably we can say that we are rehabilitating the patient right from the beginning. So we have to uh, immediate management like uh, uh, the oxygen cannula, nasal trach intubation, uh, uh, inline stabilization, everything we have to do with the collar and all, we have to stabilize that. Then ventilatory support is very important, especially that uh, the tumor, uh, sorry, the trauma is above the C4. Below C4, the respiratory insufficient may be delayed for several days, but it can occur again. And the artificial ventilation has to be initiated without waiting for signs of hypoventilation or hypoxia, because all the hypoxia will create further, further damage to the spinal cord and further neurologic deficits. Then the, another most important uh, area is to avoid hypotension. Hypotension, as we all discussed, it will uh, uh, decrease the oxygen supply to the cord and cord will get further damage and uh, systemic uh, pressure should be always above 90 degree this can be achieved uh, 90 millimeters of uh, mercury and this can be uh, achieved by uh, adequate volume dis uh, displacement and if you need that you can uh, add a dopamine also because dopamine is most often necessary to compensate for the vasoplegia induced by the loss of the sympathetic in cervical and eye thoracic cord injuries we'll discuss that later so there are two terminology three terminology actually the uh, discuss in every spinal cord injury one is spinal shock second is neuro uh, neurological shock and another thing can come along with this uh, with this uh, hemorrhagic shock Spinal shock is, uh, is defined as the complete loss of all neurological function, including reflexes and uh, rectal tone below the specific level that is associated with the autonomic dysfunction. So spinal shock is a state of transient physiological reflex depression of the cord below the level of injury. This symptom can tend to, uh, tend to last several hours to days under the reflex arc below uh, uh, the below, uh, low injury fun uh, below the injury begin to function again. And the neuronic shock, on the uh, other hand, it is a hemodynamic triad of hypertension, bradycardia, and peripheral vessel dilatation resulting from severe autonomic dysfunction. This condition is more common in injuries above T6, uh, T6 and secondary to the disruption of the sympathetic outflow from T1 to L2 uh, because of the unopposed vagal tone leading to a decrease in vascular resistance with associated vascular dilatation. And this has to be differentiated. This too has to be differentiated. Neurogenic shock versus hemorrhagic shock. Neurogenic shock occurs only, as I said earlier, presence of acute spinal cord injury above T6. Hypotension and shock with the acute um, uh, spinal cord injury at or below T6 should be caused by an hemorrhage. 
hypertension with with a special uh, fracture loan without any neurologic deficit or apparent spinal cord injury invariably due to hemorrhage. And the third is the presence of vital science, uh, science confusion in acute spinal cord injury. And the high incidence associated injury requires a very, very, very uh, diligent search for a uh, source of injury. As we discussed, I am just continuing for some more time. Uh, then uh, next is continuous uh, cardiac monitoring because they can get a severe bradycardia or even a systolia, especially during vagus stimulation. That is, whenever you do a tracheobank suction or a laryngoscopy in first four or five days, be, uh, be very careful th uh, that this can patient can go to cardiac failure, severe bradycardia due to uh, severe bradycardia. So NG tube prevent uh, you have to put an NG tube to prevent omitting aspiration decomp uh, dec to decompress abdomen. Then uh, these are uh, these patients are usually poikilothermic. That means it's susceptible to variation in the temperature that in, again in affect the recovery part of the uh, spinal cord and indulging folic cathartic is needed. So after that you have to assess the uh, uh, detailed assessment of motor sensory and perineal evaluation should be done and. Uh, once it is done, the, we have a, a, a recent, uh, the latest one of the classification we can do is, is Asia, that is Association of Spine Surgeons uh, of America. They did a uh, coded a motor sensor examination, divided a score on Asia score. And the superior level of the neurologic injury is defined as the last normal level. Uh, you have to assess the motor strength. There are key muscles are given like that, uh, C5 uh, up to L5. <coughs> Then uh, you have to do the sensory func uh, function. There are the, the dermatomal key sensory dermatomes are there. Once you uh, uh, identify that, it, patient can be uh, be classified into complete, incomplete, in, uh, incomplete, and uh, A, B, C. First is complete, uh, means no motor sensory function. Sense is uh, incomplete, the some sensory function, but no motor. C is incomplete with some motor function. D is incomplete motor function preserved below the neurologic level and it is more than grade 3 and it, E is normal. So uh, once the uh, Asia classification system, there is no paraparesis, no quadriplegia uh, terms. We have to say that it is um, C8, if the level of injury is C8, you have to say uh, that it is C8 Asia A. That means C8 Asia A means uh, the, uh, there is a code injury at a C8 with a complete paraplegia below C8 muscle, C8, uh, C8 dermatome and C8 motor innovation. Then uh, the uh, then uh, middle pregnancy alone uh, the choice of middle pregnancy alone is very 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 controversial nowadays because the overall benefit from the steroid is modest, but there is a definite de de improve, uh, definite uh, improvement uh, in motor strength. So. And on the other hand, if you give uh, the mother pregnisolone, there is a significant uh, complication associated with uh, it, like a, like a peptic ulceration, bleeding, uh, infection rate will be very high, ectolectasis of the lung are all reported. So the, now the uh, current recommendation is that it is, it is your decision whether to give steroid or not. You can decide according to your hospital or institutional uh, or your uh, preference. If you want to give, you can give. It is not, uh, not mandatory now. Then uh, surgical intervention. There is uh, emergent surgical decompression of the spinal cord is suggested in the uh, in acute setting of spinal cord injury with a progressive neurological deterioration only. And there is no currently there is no defined standard except regarding the timing of decompression stabilization in static on complete spinal cord injury. There is a study uh, going on, on uh, ongoing study is there. Uh, the results are not out. Once the results are come, then we'll know that which is better delaying or uh, doing it uh, immediate. So so far there is no uh, no recommendation like like that. Then uh, bladder function rehabilitation, we are able to tell you get a spastic or reflex bladder. If uh, the cord injury is below L1, you can get um, a reflexic or flaccid bladder. Uh, and uh, for that, you need to catheterize and uh, patient uh, blood uh, risk and renal calculi and UTS can develop. So in order to avoid that, uh, uh, you to avoid increased fluid, clean, patient can be talked about the clean self-intermittent catheterization if it's paraplegic. And they, they can, bladder can be trained by stroking some muscles, it will evacuate reflexively. That also can be tried uh, uh, as a bladder rehabilitation. Then respiratory complication can, uh, uh, <coughs> can be, di uh, because in quadriplegia, uh, intercostals will not work, so patient can get acrylic 
and uh, they will uh, breathe only with a diaphragm uh, movement so normally uh, we have to nurse them in a uh, recommend pos recumbent position and uh, occasionally fibroptic bronchoscopy can be used to clear out uh, of uh, secretions in the uh, trachea tracheostomy or mini tract is commonly called mini tract may be necessary to suck, uh, for suction and uh, in long term phrenic nerve pacing in a selected cases can be done pulmonary embolism is another rather co complication it is usually incidence at the third week and it is common as cause of the late death so this can be prevented by anti embolism stockings pneumatic compression devices or anti coagulation within 72 hours with a low molecular weight aparin and this has to be continued for three months at least. Then skin and pressure areas can, uh, uh, areas, uh, injury or a bed sore can be prevented by turning the patient every two hours, right and left and lateral positions. Uh, then you have to done, uh, you, it can be done manually or there are electric driven tilting beds are available uh, uh, in stri with a strikers. You can use uh, that if you need it. The gastrointestinal problems, uh, uh, you have to, patient should receive IV fluids for at least 48 hours to prevent the para paralytic ileus. Oral fluid should be withheld until bowel uh, uh, are returned. Then uh, NG tube uh, in, uh, can be in, uh, inserted and H2 receptor blockers can be given, uh, given uh, to prevent the peptic ulceration. Then the long term plan, the, the, this include physical, psych, uh, psychological, financial, vocal and uh, uh, social functioning. This is rehab is a lifelong process. You cannot say that um, after one month or so you can discharge the patient and they can go home and say, you have to, you have to do, do the rehabilitation throughout and you have to make the most out of the patient. For if the patient is a wheelchair bound, they have to try to make him at least uh, walk with the sprints or the braces. Like that you have to go on. And and the rehab should also make the pa uh, the uh, make the patient to adjust a new life experience within the context of uh, uh, his or her disability. They have to be motivated in such a way that they have to start enjoying their life with uh, whatever disability they have. Uh, so this is very possible. This are uh, this are, uh, they should not be. Uh, left alone, they should be encouraged to do all these activities. And uh, this is a very interesting book uh, by L Luba, and it is in search of the lowest code. is about spinal cord injury. We are still, I think, we are still in search of the lowest code. We haven't uh, got the um, right treatment for the spinal cord injury. Thank you very much.